virtual storage platform. I'm here with Ray Lucchese and David Floyer. Ray Lucchese is the president of Silverton Consultant Consulting. Ray, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Thanks and for inviting me. You're welcome. And, and David Floyer, you're, you're a CUBE alum. Wel welcome back. Thank you very much. Good to have you guys. So Ray, good to be here. Ray Lucchese, very, very astute analyst, uh, former STK, you know, in the heyday, right? And you guys were doing some really innovative Literally things. Hey, heyday, yeah. yeah, making you were making a lot of hay. Hey, rhymes with Ray. So RayOnStorage.com is the is That's the blog. That's correct. That's yeah. a blog. I'm on Twitter, Ray Lucchese. Very prolific uh, blogger, and uh, of course, you guys, uh, you guys know David Floyer of uh, Wikibon.org. So, so guys, big event here. This is very, uh, very uh, non Hitachi like. All this great marketing, Ray, Ray. What do you think? I think the marketing push is is excellent. I think it's been uh, it's been something they've uh, they've needed for for a long time. And I think as they as they move from. Uh, you know, a more OEM kind of environment to a more end user perspective, and they've been there all along, but this is even more of a push. Uh, they need to have uh, much more substantial marketing, and this is great. Yeah, and you're alluding to um, a couple of the deals, right? Uh, the Sun relationship, and of course, they've got an OEM relationship with HP, and we'll talk more about those. Um, so David Floyer, let me ask you, what, what are the high points of this announcement from your so perspective? So the high points of the announcement is, is the uh, is the extended architecture of the of the new box, and uh, it's ta it's taking a very different approach to others in this marketplace. It's it's creating a box which is flexible. It is very very powerful box. You can uh, adapt it to to work in different situations, and uh, and the virtualization strategy, the what they've called uh, uh, scale deep, um, they've extended that. And it, it offers a very clear, different strategy to uh, both EMC and IBM, especially in the, in the tier one. Anything you'd add to that, Ray? No, I think it's correct. I think uh, obviously the, the you know USB has been uh, focused on storage virtualization for for quite a while, and the VSB uh, elongates that or extends that that uh, that advantage. I think it's definitely orthogonal to what EMC has yeah. produced from a VMAX perspective, uh, IBM's DS8000, and uh, some of the other competition out there. So, from that perspective, I think there's a lot of discussion that you could go around with respect to VMAX versus uh, VSP from an architectural perspective. Well, you know, we talked to we all all three of us talked to a lot of customers, and I, my opinion is that in terms of the true high end, you know, the real mission critical types of applications, it's really it's really e EMC and Hitachi are the, the the two gold standards. You know, IBM, you know, does has the DS eight thousand. In my opinion, they haven't invested nearly the way that EMC and Hitachi have. I don't know if you guys agree with that or disagree with that. Well, yeah, you know, they cer certainly have done something with respect to the functionality. They keep updating the the the, uh, the drive hardware and some of the other other functionality. Easy tier is nothing to sneeze at. You know, it's it's uh, it's a point. very nice dynamic tiering capability, but they certainly haven't restructured, rearchitectured like. Uh, their competition, EMC and, and Itachi. Yeah. You can't leave out NetApp, and you certainly can't leave out some of the other players. Like three par. Yeah, you know the three par hates it when I when I don't include them in this Naturally. discussion. But, but you know it's going to take them time to mature, in in, in my opinion. And, uh, uh, David, is NetApp there yet? In your opinion, at this no, level? Uh, no. I, the, the, to, to be tier one, you need several uh, several things. You need the architecture. You need the ability to focus a hundred percent performance on a particular application. They uh, both uh, NetApp and uh, three part tend to be everything is okay, uh, good enough. So this, this so this VMAX versus sort of VSP is only part of the story, but I don't want to I don't want to leave it quite like to me it's like Republicans and Democrats, you know, they're, they're both bashing it, they both solve problems for their constituents, you know, but really taking a different approach. I would describe, and I wonder if you guys are you know the the, the technologists describe the sort of VMAX as more of a scale out modular, and and the VSP is sort of this tailored, really purpose built for the problem. And they're talking about scale up scale out and scale deep, which has never been done before in the industry. So I guess my question is, is how much of that is real and how much of that is, is vision? Do you have a sense of that yet, Ray? Have you been able to analyze it? So I think that, you know, they've obviously had, had uh, you know, I'll call scale deep kinds of capabilities in the, in the product in the USPV and prior version storage virtualization has been there. They're there. There's no doubt about it from that perspective. Um, scale up, you know, adding, uh, you know, the, the small form factor disk drives, the two and a half inch disk drives is, is, is a key, uh, key deliverable from a density perspective and performance perspective from a back end storage. 
uh, scale out is an interesting discussion, and that's uh, and that's where the the nut of this whole this whole VMAX VSP three par NetApp kinds of things uh, starts to starts to hit the hit the road. Um, you know, obviously VMAX is a is a more commodity type of environment. It's a more uh, you know you can use a VMAX, you can put software on it, it becomes uh, you know VPlex, you can put other software on it, it becomes something else. It's something that can they can provide a lot of different functionality on that same box. Now, if you look at the USPV or the VSP for that matter, the VSP is a storage virtualization engine. Everything that revolves around storage virtualization, they can do. Uh, and, and you know, v, VPlex is a storage virtualization engine versus uh, VMAX, which is just a storage. So it's kind of it's interesting to see how the two products are differentiating themselves. So, David Floyer, uh, um, VPlex is interesting. I was saying uh, with John Webster earlier, is, 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 is VPlex is sort of a confirmation that Hitachi's and IBM's SVC virtualization strategies have, have worked. Would you agree with that, David? Oh, oh I think so. Absolutely. And, I mean, and VPlex is trying to differentiate, but it's yes. new. It's, it's just it's you know, getting started. It's new. It's getting started. And, of course, it's got to integrate with uh, the VMAX itself. So there's a, there's, a, there's a whole integration issue that EMC have have in bringing that together. So I'm, I'm sure they'll be successful. We have ESG term. on later, and, and ESG published a study that, that showed it was basically from the U.S., and David, you picked up on this, as did I, that, that uh, EMC was number one in VMware penetration. Um, Hitachi would be, if not number one, close to number one in storage virtualization. Would you, uh, guys, you guys agree? In tier one, definitely. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's, so, so you know, one of the surprising statistics, and let me throw this out, yeah. is that, uh, and I think Brian mentioned it, you know, roughly 50% of their subsystems use storage virtualization. That is higher That's than anything I would have expected yeah. to see. I mean, in the past, it was, you know, 10, 20 percentile kinds of thing. 50% of storage virtualization. So what's happening? What's driving storage virtualization besides the M&A and, and, and the client acquisitions and stuff like that? is a key mystery in my mind. And so, and so you, you know, VSP and USP have kind of been at the forefront. SVC is there, VMA VPlex is, is coming online, yeah, and NetApp's got their own virtualization engine. So you can see all those players playing out the virtualization card. Is that drive to simplicity maybe? Or? I, it's a drive to simplicity, but uh, again, at the high end, one of the, thing, one of the big costs is the cost of migration. It's uh, $50,000, $100,000. An additional cost on for, every for technical array. upgrades for, um, for data center movement. Uh, all, of, all of those issues about migration really add to cost. And if you if you take that strategy and you can eliminate a high percentage of that cost, that's real money and real risk reduction. One of the things I was impressed with this morning was Jack Domey's uh, keynote, where usually Hitachi keynotes are very product oriented. Now Hugh Yoshida, I think, did a great job of describing the product. Jack really, you know didn't really touch on that. I mean, he touched a little bit on it, but he really set forth a vision, and he talked a lot about this content cloud and really bringing together unstructured and, and structured data. My words, not his. He, he, he was using that term, the content cloud. He talked about governance. You don't usually associate that type of content cloud with these types of mission-critical systems, do you, Ray? No, it's, it's an interesting vision, and, and that's what I call it at the moment. I think, you know, as, as, you, as you integrate, uh, you know, content, uh, file, block, and, and other types of data sitting on, on a storage computer, as you said, it was. It it's uh, it becomes a very interesting play. Now, you know, here's the question: Does does that sort of storage and information and data consolidation still make sense, or do you want to have different appliances do that sort of stuff? Data leak protection, uh, governance here, Centera for for content. You know, what's what's the right answer to that? I'm not sure anybody has the right answer. They're all valid and viable approaches. Well, it de definitely demonstrates innovation on Hitachi's yes. part, though, doesn't it? I guess it all comes down to cost, doesn't it, David? Yes, I, 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 absolutely right. And, and their vision is they should manage it. They're not saying that everything should run necessarily on the platform, but they should manage it from, uh, from their virtualization point of view, manage across it. And I, that, again, is a very different vision. Can you um, attach a Centera to a USPV? I don't know. Yeah. I don't un believe so, but I, that would be a question I, for you. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> but, you see. but I guess, um, yeah, we'll ask. But I mean, uh, uh, my, I guess my point is maybe maybe you can't attach a, a Centera, but you can attach so many other devices that that to me is the real power of, of that, that vision. But it's, it's not unclear that you couldn't attach HCAP to VSP or you sure, know, the, right. the H HNAS solution to VSP. All those things can, can be on top of a VSP block structure environment. And 
Is Just that the content cloud? Is that what he's talking about? Mm, doesn't feel uh, like it. Some some archivist stuff, some blue arc stuff, and the management framework. Yeah, and the management framework I think is the on number top one. Of all that. On top of all that, so <laughs> that you can move stuff from production to archiving to wherever it is. Oh, and that's interesting. Actually, have some sort of life cycle. Would, would, would you guys like to see HDS or Hitachi take a more active role in in, in M and A, and maybe you know go after a company like a Blue Arc? What do you think about something like that? So Blue Arc is a, a natural acquisition. If 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 they want to play that, they they're they're they've been doing good work and and good uh, good uh, business in my mind with Blue Arc for for a while there, and it, they continue that relationship. The, does an acquisition make sense? Certainly. I mean, to some extent, Blue Arc sitting there with with hardware accelerated file system, you know, and, and Hitachi's, if if nothing more, is this taking the storage computer and and building ASICs and the architecture and and uh, throughput and the fifth generation crossbar. It's it's a, it's a hardware architected soft storage system. So you know, the merger of those two makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I would think that that would really send a ripple effect through the industry and and and, and to me underscore the differentiation that we've been talking I mean, about. I should invest in Blue Art. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> we've, we've made some good predictions here in the cube and yeah, sometimes we're not always right, but uh, but but that's not Hitachi's not prone to those those types of major acquisitions. I mean, it did archive us, but it's been relatively reluctant. So you hear a lot about the Hitachi transformation. I, I think it would be a, a great play. I, I, I think it would be a great play, and I think it's uh, Hitachi should become more aggressive in, uh, especially with uh, software technologies in uh, making. You know, these guys, the guys are spending seven billion dollars in R and D over the next yeah. couple of years. I mean, God, I don't know billion here, a billion there, you can actually buy something. <laughs> How about, well, I talked to the $97 billion company. You know, Revenue, yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty, pretty impressive. How about VMware? What do you guys think of the, the VMware story that you're hearing today, Ray? So VMware is driving server consolidation, data center consolidation. So as these customers get more and more virtualized, they, they need more and more enterprise class storage, reliability, availability, and support 24 by 7 in order to keep their environment up. It's driving enterprise storage as if nothing like it has been in the past. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, their implementation of this lovely acronym, wasn't it? V-A-A-I. V-A-A-I. VMware needs some new naming directors. It needs some better. Always got to have a V in front of it. Their implementation is has looks very, very good and very complete. Hitachi's. Hitachi's implementation of this, and it's very early to market. I must admit. Yeah, they're not first, but they're really early, aren't they? Yes, We're talking about this year. Year, you know, yes, they're, they're yeah. right around the time. It. I think that uh, November they're, time frame is. They're talking right? about some of the, the the benefits that are coming from this, uh, in particular the uh, um, very technical SCSI. Um, uh, there's, there's a some uh, SCSI locking which goes on, and they are getting rid of that by pushing it down to the array. Yeah, we just lost a thousand <coughs> viewers. Yes. No, are. but but your, po your but point is it relates to <laughs> clustering and scale out. And my point is that the num uh, that is a constraint on the number of uh, VMware machines you could run on a server. So by eliminating that, they're actually able to increase the number of uh, virtual servers. So it's a scalability thing. It's, it's allowing allowing VMware to scale the more and more virtual machines by providing you know uh, hardware oriented facilities that that just make it perform a lot better than than without it. So that's part of the scale out vision, right? Potentially. Uh, if Is you take right? the scale out from the storage perspective to the the yeah. application yes. and virtual yeah. server perspective, yes. So okay, so scale deep, scale up, scale out on a scale of one to ten. Ten being you know we're there. Uh, one being need need quite a bit of work to do. What, what would you guys say for uh, for scale deep for Hitachi? Oh, they're, they're nine and a half. Nine and a half. David, yeah, do you agree with that? They're, they're and how about scale up? Ten point five. Is that, yeah, uh, to me, yeah. they're the, they're the best in scale up. Scale out is uh, scale is, up is is, is, is in is my mind really, storage really capacity. So they've got this, you know, with deep, which is <laughs> their their card, right? Two hundred forty seven petabytes of storage behind this. It's kind of hard to beat that. Yeah. Okay. And then scale up. You guys would say, well, or would you guys are we hearing out. disagreement? Scale how out. How about scale up? How, what you say? I think we're, I think we're okay from a, from an external storage perspective. Internal storage, they're 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 you know both both EMC and and they can support two thousand disk drives. I mean, it's 
But I think from a raw performance point of view, the architecture, the ease It'd be of interesting to, to see the performance it. comparisons yeah. between a VMAX configuration yeah. and a VSB configuration. And, you know, we we'll probably yeah. won't see that except in a few esoteric applications. Well, yeah, well Hitachi has, has the SPC record, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and the, the yeah, at the yeah. moment, I guess I'd moment, have to look at it. I would think this would beat it, but yeah. EMC doesn't participate in, in those. But now scale out. What about scale out? Scale of 1 to 10. What? Uh, where are we here uh, in the maturity curve? That, that's the question. If you look at something like VMAX, it's, it's not apparent that it couldn't go from 4 to 8 eight to 16 to 24 these remax nodes without breaking a sweat without having to change hardware without having to change back end without having to do anything these guys they've got a blade cabinet so you've got one control chassis you can go to two control chassis can you go to three can i go to four i doubt it it's not apparent okay so the scale out would need some work the other two two out of three is not bad i mean oh, still it's very good the yeah. vision the, this is unprecedented right scale out scale up scale deep and um they would yeah. achieve the scale out with the scale deep they would argue, yes. And, and perhaps it's, it's so performance, right? Yeah. By by adding more and more external storage, you can increase the performance of a VSP right. up to some limit, up whatever that limit, limit is. Okay, so that you yeah. can they, they can they can tick that scale out box and well, and they, they've got the scale out. They go for two processors to four to six to eight. You know, they've yeah. got they've got a certain amount of scale out in in the in the VSP. Yeah. It's no doubt that the, it's there. They have the advantage of it that it's integrated, whereas Vplex and Vmax still need it to be an advantage or disadvantage of integration. The, the, the disadvantage of integration is that the cost of, of doing that technology, that ASICs, the fifth Absolutely. generation of crossbar, the sixth generation of crossbar, to keep yeah. all these things up, is a challenge that they have to it's maintain. It's tailored. It's custom. It is right? custom, right. but it's you know seven billion dollars R and D. That's where That's that goes. Ninety-seven yeah. billion dollar company. And yeah. You know. Maybe they can afford it. All right, we're here with Ray Lucchese and David Floyer. Uh, Ray Lucchese of Sil Silverton Consulting. Uh, RayOnStorage.com is, is the blog, at Ray Lucchese on Twitter, at DFloyer, Wikibon.org. Guys, thanks very much for coming on and uh, having a great session on theCUBE. Appreciate it. Thanks, great. Dave. Thanks for inviting me.